morning and thank you for joining me today welcome to good fruit gardens so today I wanted to talk to you about your watering schedule for your garden there are three main points that I wanted to discuss with you today so in Arizona we deal with very extreme heat and I was originally watering in the morning hours. I would get up at five o'clock in the morning and water. And when I would come out at four o'clock in the afternoon, I noticed that my soil was already completely dried. Um, so I switched watering from morning to evening hours and I noticed it's made a huge difference for me in my garden. So I typically water once that sun sets pretty good between 720 and 745 here in Arizona. And what I noticed is it seems maybe because the sun isn't up to dry out that water during the day, it penetrates a lot deeper into the soil. When I check my soil the next day around four o'clock, my soil is still moist. My plants don't look as thirsty and my I don't get the leaf curl in some of my plants. They just look a lot better with me switching to evening watering times. The second thing I wanted to talk to you about watering is if you are not on an irrigation system that is set for the same time to water every day, definitely hand water your garden at the same time every day. I actually hand water my garden because I love to. I love to come out here, I love to be in my garden, so I choose to continue to hand water my garden. But I noticed when I would water at like seven o'clock and then again, the next day maybe at 9 30 it really made a difference in the leaves of my plant so i got better about being consistent with my watering and i set a timer to water at the same time every day so now my plants are getting water between 7 27 45 at the latest you also want to do this because your bell pepper plants for example can get blossom and rot from either a calcium deficiency or inconsistent watering receiving uh, letting that soil completely dry out and then flooding it with water is not good for plants like bell peppers so consistent watering is key to your garden and the third thing that I wanted to talk to you about is maybe you guys aren't doing this it was a mistake that I made that I have learned from when I first started gardening I was not watering my entire bed space I would sometimes have um, a space of maybe two feet in the middle between plants and so I wasn't watering that empty space before um, and the the problem with that is you never know how your root system looks underneath the soil I didn't realize how quickly roots will spread out in the garden so that area that I wasn't watering um, had roots underneath it and I didn't find that out until I went to dig up a plant or dig um, soil up to plant something there one day and there were roots already there and then I discovered oh my gosh I should have been watering this the whole time I think that was part of the detriment why my summer garden struggled last year because um, my plants didn't take off and when they did they had stunted growth and I believe that that was a big contributor, the not watering the entire bed so that those roots that were trying to travel out and create a good root system, they weren't getting water. And obviously the health of our plants depends on how strong our root systems are. So definitely water your entire bed space when you are watering your garden regardless of what you see up top remember there's a whole ecosystem going on underneath that soil that needs attention and needs love so water the entire garden space so i hope this tip has helped you if so please like subscribe and share click on that notification bell so that you guys can receive these quick tip videos and i will see you next time may your life and your garden produce good fruit bye